All right. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of what I am sure is a very busy day for you today because we've got a long weekend coming up that I know everyone can probably use just as much as I can. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So we'll jump right in here. We'll get into these release two highlights and uh, hopefully give you some information that you can use. So um, as Julia said, my name is Philip Massey. I am the Software Services Director for Dean Dorton Allen Ford, which means I get the privilege of working with the team that has most likely done your implementation and or supports your organization uh, at this time on Sage Intact. So that really is my privilege. Um, I'll be going through all the new changes. The release just came out this past weekend. Um, and uh, excited about it. It's got a lot of nice new features inside. Before we jump into that, however, I do want to remind you guys about a concept of a preview company. So if you have not heard of preview companies before, then shame on me. You should have. Uh, a preview company is a chance for you to get an early look at what a release is going to be like. So if there's new features that you're looking forward to, um, or if you just want to play around in it, uh, then you would have that ability. If you want to get a preview company, you need to send an email to Kim Ditton at DDAF Tech or kditton at ddaftech.com. Uh, Kim, you're, you're more than likely familiar with her. She will help you get the release set up, and your request does have to be submitted to Intact before June 21st. So if you'd like one, and I would really almost encourage everyone to have one, go ahead and send her an email, and we'll get that set up. Um, so the release to notes, as always. Sage Intact does a masterful job of putting together videos, documentation, everything about the release that's going out. You really almost don't need me, which I've heard more than one time from different people. But anyway, um, the release two notes are out there. They're built into the software. There's just a tremendous amount of information. So. When you have a long weekend coming up, you can take a little bit of time and go through all these videos, right? Everybody's going to do that at the lake or beach or something like that this weekend. So uh, I expect a lot of traffic on the site. So let's jump in. First thing I want to mention is a nice non-program related change, but I want to make sure that you all are aware of it. So the Learning Center, the place where you go to get educated about the Sage Intact solution, is now connected to your instance of Sage Intact. So if you notice here in this screenshot in the upper right-hand corner, when you go to Help and Support, there'll now be a choice for Learning Center. And it should be that if you go to it and you're not already connected with your account at the Learning Center, you will be prompted to be connected. And if you don't have a Learning Center account, you will be able to request one, okay? So I think that's great. There's no more separate logins. You're able to get into your Learning Center account and find the classes and stuff that you need. That's doubly exciting because the Sage Intact Fundamentals training class is now in a also in a pre-recorded free version. So previously the fundamentals class was only available in an eight hundred dollar per person, typically per person in air quotes, uh, paid class that was live. But now it is available in a free pre-recorded self-paced class. Um, if you have any questions about this, the Learning Center, the pre-recorded class, anything like that, please don't hesitate to reach out. All right, so I've got a lot of slides. So I'm gonna go through some of these kind of quickly and take my time on some of the others, but let's jump right in. 
Um, as Julia said, if you have questions, just toss them in the chat and we'll be happy to answer them. So from a company perspective, we now, uh, you know, the, the checklists are a recent addition to the system. And in this latest release, they've gone in and enhanced those checklists, right? So it's, it's get a tool out there, get a good base for it like they did for checklists. And then we bring out something like checklist options where you can now come in and you can do some user restrictions. You can manage security at a more granular level. So uh, here, for example, who can update checklists and who can update assignments in the system. So what they're working towards is they're working towards a checklist system that you can use within the Sage Intact environment to really hone in on how your workflow processes work and exactly who uh, has permissions to do certain things um, within the uh, within the organization within those checklists right and as always it tracks who does what and, and that kind of thing so we've got some new restrictions for example on the assignment constraints with the starting and ending date so it's going to do some logic, um, logical checks uh, in the system on those things and make sure that your dates, make sure that things that are set up within the checklist and how they're configured are correct. So as you see here, the, the start date here of 5-5-2021, you've got some constraint types here as to when these different assignments and checklist objects can be utilized and can take place within your setup of how you want your workflows to be. So you've got a little bit more control over not only what the checklist has in it now, but who can edit it, who can uh, come in and say that I've completed this, and then really constraints around can be put in place around when something can be started, when something can be finished, um, lots of really nice enhancements on the checklist option for this release. There's also the ability to import uh, checklists and assignments. So that's great if you like developing a checklist in Excel, if that's just a little bit more handy for you, as you see the example down here at the bottom. Populate that Excel sheet, run through the very straightforward import process inside Sage Intact, just like everywhere else, and you'll have all of those checklists uh, in the system and able to be assigned and used um, or import your assignments as well. So we do have some objects out there for creating reports on checklists and assignments. The caveat to this is that they are only in the custom report writer, which is the, um, let's just say it's the standard or the older report writer. Uh, probably not supposed to use the word older in reference to it, but uh, it is not in the ICRW, the interactive custom report writer. So those objects are not in there, but they are in the standard report writer that everyone has, and you can, of course, add these to your dashboards. So really take a look at these checklists and see what they could be used for. You can do them for a new hire process, like a, an onboarding or an orientation. You could do them for product release. Um, you know, quarterly releases of Intact, here are the steps we want to go through to make sure that the quarterly release is functioning properly so that we can report something as soon as possible and we're not finding out there's an issue with the check process when we go cut checks and we need to pay those vendors, right? Create that checklist, look at these things ahead of time and cut off any issues. Now there's also a new closed through summary dashboard component. So in your environment within Sage Intact, you can now see uh, in a dashboard component how your different uh, GL and subledger modules, uh, when they are closed through. You can see the example here with the closed status, which I hope most folks on here 
really have statuses like these where the GL was last closed in June 30 of 2019, but hey, you know, uh, to each their own. Uh, but you can now take that dashboard object or this object, put it on your dashboard, and you can see by entity and by ledger where you are last closed. So take a look again at those checklists. I think that's a really under estimated feature in intact that they are developing they are giving more power to it and it's got the opportunity to really do a lot for an organization's organization so um, so general ledger so you can now establish gl approval cadences so talk to me about uh, who out here, well, you can't talk to me, can you? Um, you can try. I'm not going to hear you, though. Sorry. Um, you know, if you're out there and you're just getting bombarded by email notifications about general ledger approvals that are out there, you are apparently not alone because they have now built into the application whether or not you want to get daily uh, notifications, individual transaction notifications, and I believe there's also a weekly and monthly uh, summary uh, if you uh, should so choose to ignore your colleagues for that long. Um, it's perfectly okay to do that. Um, if you do weekly or monthly, they'll notify you on the last day of the week or month. If you do daily, they'll notify you at the end of the day based on your company time configuration. So just on the way out the door, you can get notified about approvals that you need to make. Um, GL approval cadence here. So again, here we're just looking at some of the different choices that you can have for that. Um, GL approvals, so the comments over here can now contain the submit to approver and you can easily view attachments from the list of approvals. So here you can see we drill in. Uh, we've got the attachment icon over here to the right. So we see approving journal entries, and right here is your attachment, and then it'll bring up this window here where, of course, you can dive deeper into those attachments. And it's it's really all about trying to make things more streamlined for you as you work during the day. So, GL outlier detection. If you have a line uh, that was allocated in a general journal entry, you can click the shade, the window shade, to see the details. And if there is an outlier, you will see the exclamation point. Uh, you can hover over it and see what has caused the outlier, maybe the amount, or if it was coded slightly differently than expected. And I'm just going to pause here for a second. So the GL outlier detection, if you have not turned that on before, I would really, really encourage you to talk to us, to talk to someone, uh, about turning on the GL outlier detection. I think it is a, it's a quiet feature right now, but I think uh, there is a tremendous amount of momentum behind it. Um, it's been extremely well received, and it is one of the big steps towards working to a continuous close concept to where you are not waiting to the end of the month to find things that need to be corrected, but they are being identified in real time and you're able to make those changes so that you have an even faster uh, month in close. So if you have not enabled geo outlier detection, please let us know. We would be more than happy to help you get that set up. It's a straightforward process and we can definitely help you get that set up. All right, so if you are, this this is really handy for those, especially anyone using contracts, uh, and in a lot of ways, dynamic allocations as well, uh, depending on how you do certain things. 
So in the general ledger setup now, you can set by default for certain books to come into your standard general ledger reports. So um, your, st um, your standard general ledger reports. Now this is not financial reports, but it is standard GL reports. So the report like the general ledger itself uh, these books would be included, the entries in these books would be included uh, into those reports so that you can see the full detail. Um, if you're a, a contracts organization, for example, and you're adhering to ASC 606, this is great because you no longer have to have a memorized report in order to get the full look at your data easily. Uh, and you don't have to select it every time you run the report, you can default it. So that's a really, really good thing for certain organizations. Um, anybody really using a, a user-defined book uh, could benefit from that potentially. Dimension balances report. Uh, so we've added some new content selection options. And what's really cool about it is if you look here, you can see it in this top little green box. You can see actual numbers, you can see budget numbers, or you can see actual and a budget numbers and you can pick your budget. You've also got options here to retain the year-to-date balances in here, so you're not just looking at, say, certain monthly period balances, for example, um, and then how the budget and actuals are shown, plus whether you have a difference. So. If we go forward, here's your dimensional balance report. You can see the accounts, the departments, the locations, and then now you have a budget, you have an actual, and then you have a difference report. So it's a really handy little report, especially now being able to compare actuals to budgets because you can put together some things you know, based on how different departments uh, are set up and configured and, and maybe give alternative views into performance uh, within NTAC. So it's another way to grab budget versus actual reports and do some difference calculations uh, and things of that like. So really nice uh, add into the system would encourage you to take a look at that. All right, so accounts payable. Uh, and by the way, Julie, if you get any questions and you feel like you need to interrupt in order to get them answered timely, please feel free to stop me. Otherwise, I'm going to keep Absolutely. Moving. We've only gotten a few questions, but I believe both people have said, never mind, I have found it. So you are just absolutely doing a great job explaining everything. Oh, wait, we did get one. Is there a way to use the dimension balance report in a similar way as a 13-week cash flow? Um, you know, we'd probably want to talk about that offline. Honestly, I'd, I'd be more than happy to have a, a quick conversation with that person. It's probably a little bit more than we could talk about right now, but um, I will definitely reach back out. I'll make sure I get their name down and pass that along to you. Okay, great. So accounts payable. So the big new feature in accounts payable is that you can now cancel payment requests in bulk. So you see our little green area over here, right? You can click that top box, you can select them all, you can select two, three, four, five, six, ever how many you need to or want to cancel, and you can send those guys right back to the pay bill screen to be paid at a later time. You go through the selection process, your controller, your CFO says, yeah, sorry, we're not paying any bills this week. Let's wait till next week. Uh, now it's two clicks to send those guys right back to the uh, pay bill screen. So that's a nice little workflow feature to have to save you some time. Um, you can, uh, now there's some improved AP ledger filtering uh, limit AP credits to the entity owners and limit AR credits to the entity owners. So in your multi-entity console here, you do now have some ability to limit the reporting that comes through and it will not show external uh, credits. So 
uh, external credits are going to be credits that are entered in uh, adjustments, advances, or negative bills uh, created in one entity and applied to a transaction in a different entity. Um, so they're going to be more prominent now when they show up in the reports uh, if you choose to include them or you do have some ability to limit what comes through into those reports. So uh, canceling payments and the ability really to have a more defined uh, AP area. Okay, um, customer drill down on the aging report. And believe it or not, this is one of the little things that I am uh, really happy about. I unfortunately have not had a chance to test this yet, so I am uh, gonna have to set aside some time to go through this. But you've got an ability from the customer aging report now to drill back into the customer to get some more detailed information. Uh, this can really help for those who might be doing collections, uh, might be following up with John Jones to say, hey, sir, you've got a $100 uh, uh, item out there, or, well, gosh, look at this. Reasonable security doesn't seem too reasonable to me because they still owe $693,000 in 91 days and older uh, demo environments, right? But uh, you could call up reasonable security and you could have a lot more information at your fingertips with that new drill down. Uh, the advances, uh, we do now have the ability to drill in on those uh, advances as well. So if you're in an AR ledger, and you drill in, you will now see the advances information when you do the drill down. You know, this feature is one of those areas where they are working feverishly inside of Sage Intact to bring all components of Sage Intact into the same look, feel, smell, taste, all of that so that you do have a truly 100% uh, cohesive experience in any area of intact. And advances, uh, there's a couple of areas that, yeah, just quite honestly, we're, we're still a little older uh, in their workflows and looks and things like that. Uh, advances was one of those, but they are bringing that forward. So if we jump into cash management, um, you can reopen a bank reconciliation, obviously. Um, you know, you could do that uh, before. Um, now the system remembers the matched items. Uh, it's still best practice to download the PDF of the reconciliation report before you do go back and open it up. Uh, it's not going to remember the ending balance, et cetera, right? So you, it's, they've enhanced the workflow behind reopening the bank reconciliation to make it a little bit easier to go back and re-reconcile one, but still be cautious as you're doing that. Um, on the funds transfers, this is kind of exciting. Uh, you've got a posting details tab. So funds transfers, bank and interest charges, other receipts and credit card charges and other fees you have a posting details tab. I say this is exciting because, you know, I am a CPA and there's this, uh, what do we call it affectionately, right? Anal retentive part of me. All, all CPAs, you know, love numbers and, and things like that, or you would think they do. Um, otherwise, they'd be something else. But anyway, love seeing the debits, credits, love knowing that something balances, love knowing what the accounts are that are involved everywhere along the way and all of these things. So I am truly excited and I hope to see this everywhere inside of every aspect of this age and tax solution. But seeing these posting details so that you can go in and you can see an individual transaction and you can see how that affected your general ledger. Okay, this is cool. Too. So a lot of cool features uh, in here. Don't mean to say they're all cool or downplay any of them, but I do like this one. Automatically refreshes every four hours. You can access bank transactions from checking, saving credit card setup screens, 
and the user must have permissions uh, to bank transactions. Uh, here, now, we've expanded for ignore and manual match uh, in the system to be able to take those transactions that have, that have downloaded and push those into the environment. So here we show the checking accounts uh, screen, and we've got a quick link on this screen for the bank transactions. So we can just hop right in to the transactions that have been brought in. And when we are here in the checking account information, we're looking at the bank feed itself. We've got a action item area over here on the right-hand side where you will be able to dive in and really commit those transactions, determine what they are, uh, and, and have them uh, brought into your system or matched or whatever the, uh, the, the action item is that you need to take. So that's, it's handy. And, and again, a lot of this is really about pulling capabilities within these systems into the most convenient place possible to allow you to work faster, to work smarter, uh, and not uh, work harder within your environment. So bank transaction rules, um, uh, these are new permissions that are out there. So bank transaction rules and bank transaction rule sets. Uh, you've got to grant permissions uh, to people in order to set this up. So this is one of those areas where in this release we've got some new functions and you have to go out and give people permissions to this otherwise they not only won't be able to do it they won't really be able to see it so check your permissions area in cash management for um, these bank transaction rule options and set them up accordingly uh, setting up a rule so here for example matching conditions, posting date equals posting date, document number equals document number, and amount equals amount. So you're, you're able to affect the rule that you want to have in the system for how these feeds are processed, how these transactions are processed in the system. Um, again, you've got to give yourself permissions to get to these screens but you, you do have an ability in uh, the system here. Uh, one thing to point out is this one that is highlighted in yellow, it's document number with the leading zeros removed. Uh, that's always a great choice. You know, some banks won't process the 0002350, it'll just see 2350. So, you know, that, that's a great option to have in there. But this is where you can set up and configure those rules and you can have an effect on how that whole process works and really design it around your environment. Um, so here's your rule set. Um, you can have multiple rules, uh, some active, uh, you know, you can activate them, deactivate them. Um, so you can have multiple rules that can be applied uh, in the system. And then if you select rules here in that green box, you'll see the rule set that comes up and you can select accounts that are applied to those rule sets, right? So if we go to this next screen here, a rule is what logically makes the match. A rule set is a container for those rules. Rule sets allow you to specify the order and associate bank accounts or credit card accounts. Each bank account can have one rule set. If no rule sets are set up and the user is using bank feeds, they'll get an error when they go into reconciliation. And there's currently a banner on the screen that lets customers know that this is coming or will be there, right? So basically, you configure your rules, you put your rules in a rule set, and then you assign bank accounts to those rule sets. Now, that, that means different bank accounts, whether they're in different countries or have different processes and procedures, can have different rule sets. Um, different bank accounts can be associated with different entities. You can have rule sets uh, kind of along those lines as well, too. Lots of possibilities in here for how these bank feeds can now be set up. 
This, I think, is a really, really good feature and function in the system that will uh, streamline the bank reconciliation process greatly. Okay, so let's jump over into order entry. Serial, bin, and lot entry. All right, so we've made some enhancements here. We've added a link on the grid right here for this green box um, that shows that you need to add that information. The window shade then shows the grid. Uh, drop downs available with serial, lot, and or bin information. So again, put something kind of right here at your fingertips, make it obvious for you, and then give you a quick way to get that information into the system. So again, posting details tab, you know, again, I'm, I'm this CPA accountant kind of guy, right? I love seeing the full debits and credits and everything that's going to happen here. This shows the IET posting. If you have multiple entities and you have inter-entity transactions, it shows multi-currency. If you are dealing with multiple different company uh, currencies, it's available at the top level and the entity. Um, and if you do have the MIV tool um, on the inventory side and COGS gets adjusted, that posting will show here as well. So really, really a big capability uh, that's been added into the system for those of us who are like me that want to really drill down into the details and see things as I'm looking at transactions as opposed to running general ledger reports and stuff like that. So I actually love, love, love those. All right, inventory. You can now allow negative inventory for a warehouse. Uh, warehouse transfers, if not being serial or lot tracked, um, they will let you go negative uh, on the inventory for those certain warehouses. Um, you can set up the drop ship warehouse flag on the warehouse setup. And uh, that's a nice feature to have inside the uh, inventory module. Um, items, uh, look at that, item in the Kentucky, well, I guess that's supposed to be warehouse, but that's close enough. And hey, they mentioned, uh, we mentioned Kentucky in these slides, home of Dean Dorton, that's great. Um, the, the big changes that improve this functionality, um, you're able to come in here and take a look for cross-references and you can now stipulate cross-reference items based on the customer, the vendor that you're dealing with, certain substitutes that might be available. Um, you can even look at upgrades and downgrades. So if you don't want item 100, for example, you could do item 101. Um, you could upgrade them to item 60100. So it, it's a great way to potentially do a little upselling or uh, handle shortages uh, within your environment. Item attributes uh, are now available for adding to printed documents, right? So you can do that uh, with the item attributes. And then you've got even more capabilities here for some additional information where you can create uh, different attributes. You can add different measures, countries of origins, uh, things like that. You've really got a tremendous ability to track a lot of information about those items uh, here, as you can see, even another screen uh, that can be brought up there. Um, when you are looking at an item, uh, you'll see the bin items screen, and that will show you the bins, lots, and serial numbers that this is currently available in. So this is great for organizations that are managing inventory that may have multiple warehouses and need to track that information down to the detail of, of which you would need to track it with um, if you are an inventory intensive organization. So that's great to have. And then there is now a warehouse transfer document. So um, you've got the ability to do those warehouse transfers. Now you can print a warehouse transfer document that would give you the ability to send something along with 
a shipment, an individual, uh, you know, whatever you needed to send, uh, send it with. Purchasing Posting Details tab shows you the IET posting, shows you multi-currency, and it is available at the top level and entity level. And again, you know, really jazzed uh, seeing all this information, all this detail in here now, uh, just as, as someone who, who does research on transactions and uh, kind of needs additional information. All right, purchasing three-way matching. So this is uh, an early adopter program. Um, I'll mention it here, but there will be information on your purchasing transactions screen. Uh, so we're making some enhancements to the three-way match to automatically validate the details. Um, you know, there are some caveats to it. If you want to get uh, in this, reach out to Kim Denton, uh, and she can get you some more information on exactly what it is. But this is another one of those steps in an ability to build some intelligence into the application. So if you're doing and using the purchasing module to a great extent, I think this is something I would definitely reach out to Kim and get some more information on that and see if you can get signed up for it. Billable charge card transactions. So you can now flag a credit card charge as billable and assign it to a project or a customer. That will then roll into the generate invoice area where you will then have or the ability to invoice uh, for that. Right? So that's a great feature, adding stuff like that in at all different levels. Billable charge card transactions here, again, you do need to go in and set this up. So in configuration of the projects, you will need to add credit card transactions over to the right-hand side for selected items. And in the generate invoices area, um, you will also need to go into the display options and check the box for credit card transactions. The generate transactions screen, you'll see a credit card transactions area down at the bottom, and you'll be able to select those. Uh, also, when you're doing a um, import into the system or when you are writing a custom report in the custom report writer, you'll now notice uh, either a billable checkbox for the report or a billable column for the import of those credit card transactions. So uh, building it into all areas of the Sage Intact solution. Uh, project manager can now edit draft project invoices they generated. Um, so I think there may be at least one customer that I know of out there that if they find out about this, they may do a happy dance uh, out in the parking lot of their organization. Um, I, I may, uh, <clears throat> wait and tell them when I uh, get to their office so I can video that happy dance. But um, they've expanded the functionality of these project management users to give them some more capabilities inside the invoicing process within the Sage Intact um, project module. Um, and that's that's great. I know there's, a, like I said, at least one company out there that's going to uh, be happy about that. So the financial report writer, to me, I think already head and shoulders above the other financial report writers that are out there. I've been working with multiple different accounting systems for five years, um, uh, a while. And um, it, it is one of the best systems, if not the best financial reporting system that I have seen. Um, and we've now added some capabilities inside to create a budget to actual difference column uh, here, budget minus actual. Um, there's an actual minus budget, there's a budget minus actual, and then you've got a budget forecast prorated column uh, in here as well. So a couple of new choices inside your financial report writer. Those are great. Um, Rounding capabilities, uh, the report will disregard anything after the decimal mark regardless 
of the currency. So uh, basically here or there, if it's uh, $18.91, it'll be $18 uh, kind of thing. So it's just ignoring, uh, in whole number, it's ignoring anything after the decimal. So the interactive custom report writer. Now, I know we don't have a whole lot of customers that use this, but it is uh, a nice tool and it's becoming an even nicer tool. So you can now join two or more reporting areas using equal statements. That to me is a fantastic, fantastic feature add in the system. You've got inner, outer, left, right, and full joins, even unions, and union alls uh, can be used. So a lot of capabilities. It's, it's really, really encouraging to see that in there.